Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel, and I am now answering a question from the Mechanics M1 June 2022 International A Level at Excel paper. Uh, this question here, it seems it's about statics. It says a small block of mass 5 kilograms lies at rest on a rough horizontal plane. The coefficient of friction between the block and the plane is 3 over 7. A force of magnitude P newtons is applied to the block in a direction which makes an angle of 30 degrees with the plane as shown in figure 1. The block is modeled as a particle. Find the magnitude of the frictional force exerted on the block by the plane and describe what happens to the block justifying your answer. Okay, so we have this <coughs> block that is lying on this plane. Okay, um, I've just got a copy of the diagram here. So let's put the forces that are acting on this block on this diagram. So we, here we have its weight acting vertically downwards, which is 5 G Newtons. And you also have the reaction force as it's in contact with the surface, which is perpendicular to the surface. Therefore, that's going to be vertical, which I'll call R. And there's a force P applied this way. That means it's going to be you know trying to move in this direction and the frictional force acting will be trying to prevent it moving in that direction now we've got to try and see what actually happens whether it's able to prevent it or not so there's a frictional force here okay now let's um so those are the inf that's the information we also know that the coefficient of friction is three over seven coefficient of friction is given this symbol mu that that's uh, what coefficient of friction is now what we know is in a situation like this, the frictional force will always oppose the motion. So, you know, there will be a force acting in this direction, and the frictional force will act in the opposite direction. And there's going to be, the frictional force keeps increasing to match the force acting in the opposite direction that's trying to pull it, until it reaches its maximum possible value in that particular situation okay which is called we call f max okay now f max once the frictional forces reaches f max is maximum possible value okay it cannot increase on that anymore and if the force pulling on the other direction becomes more than f max then the object will start moving so if the force acting in this direction which i'm going to now um put down as a resolved force this the force acting in this direction let me just put it in a different color the force acting in this direction okay which is the re resolving p in this direction basically is if i resolve p in horizontal to the plane that's going to be p times and when you go into the angle it's going to be cosine 30 i'll also resolve it this way as well that will be p times sine 30 because you have to go away from the angle let me just move that out of the way so you have p times sine 30. so this is the f this force resolved horizontally and this is this force resolved vertically when you have to go into the angle it's going to be cosine because it's like this is the adjacent side when you're going away from the angle when you're going away this p has resolved in a direction away from the angle given then it's like you're finding the opposite side, the vertical. So it's going to be the sine, the sine of 30. And they told us that P is 14. So we know P is 14 in this situation. So I can replace the P with 14. So this is 14. So this is 14 sine 30 and 14 cosine 30. All right, now, if 14 times cosine 30 is greater than F max, Okay, if it's greater than F max, then, okay, the object will move. Then the block, the block will move. Okay, but if, however, if 14 cosine 30 is less than or equal to F max, if it's if this is less than or equal to f uh, f max, then um, okay, 
then the object won't move, the block won't move, and you can say that um, f will be equal to 14 cosine 30, because it will just match this value. Okay, so let's we, the key now is to find what f max is. So to find what f max is, I'm going to resolve the forces vertically. If I resolve the forces vertically, um, I can say take up as positive. I can say that r plus 14 sine 30 is equal to 5g. Now many people make a mistake here. They just say r equals 5g. That would be true if this force 14 was horizontal. Then it has no component in the vertical direction. But this force 14 newtons is not horizontal. It's at an angle to the horizontal, so it'll have a component in the vertical and the horizontal direction. So you have to include that as an upward force. So we can say that R is equal to 5G minus 14 sine 30. Okay, and so that's going to be R equals 5 times 9.8 minus 7, because sine 30 is a half. So we get our value there. So we have 5 times 9.8 minus 7. That gives us 42. So R is equal to 42 newtons. Therefore, F max is equal to mu times R, as we said. So it's equal to 3 over 7 times 42. 7 goes into 42 6 times. Uh, 3 times 6 is 18 newtons. So F max is equal to 18 newtons. So we can say that uh, 14 cosine 30, okay, um, let's, uh, 14 cosine 30 is equal to what? Is equal to, so you have that's 14 times root 3 over 2, which is equal to 7 root 3, which gives the, the value 7 times root 3, which is 12.124. 12.124, which is 12.1. So we can see here very clearly that 14 cosine 30 is less than F max. Therefore, the block is remains stationary, we can say. It remains stationary. And F is equal to 14 cosine 30, F is equal to 12.1 newtons. That's the frictional force. Because it's, the frictional force uh, generated is enough always to prevent the motion occurring. Okay, so just because F max is equal to, uh, you know, 18, it doesn't mean this is always going to be 18. This, the maximum the friction can get to is 18, but, uh, you know, as this force increases, this also increases the match. If there's no force pulling in this direction, if there's no, if the horizontal component of this was zero, then there, there will be no friction. If this was one, the friction would be one. If this became two, the friction would be two. If the horizontal force pulling this way was 10, this would be 10. If this was 14, this would be 14. But if this got to 18, this would be 18. If this got to 19, this will stay at 18 because that's the maximum in this particular situation that it can reach. So in this situation, when this force is 14 newtons, the maximum frictional force that can be generated with this particular situation, with this particular coefficient of friction, is 18 newtons. And as the horizontal component of the force pulling this way is less than 18 newtons, therefore the object won't move because this can match that, and that will be the value of F. F will equal 14 cosine 30. Okay, so there's part A. Now we're going to go on to part B. Now, part B says, the value of P is now changed, so the block is on the point of slipping along the plane. Find the value of P. So let's get the diagram over here first. Okay, so here's the diagram. Now, we the value of P is now changed. We've got to find what P is. P is no longer 14. Okay, so I can just replace these. Everything else is the same in terms of uh, the diagram. So that's P sine 30. That's P cosine 30. That's P. Okay, the coefficient friction is still the same. All right, so now it's on the point of slipping. So that means F max has been achieved. F max has been achieved. However, F max is not 18 anymore because F max depends on the value of P. 
f max depends on the value of p all right and r is also not the same as before because of, co of course it also depends on the value of p because p has a component upwards so you can't just say f max is 18 and use that to find what um, p is we have to work out um, we have to deal with this in as a new situation now so again we have to resolve the forces horizontally and vertically so if i resolve the forces vertically first i have p sine 30 plus r is equal to 5g and if i resolve the forces horizontally i have p cosine 30 is equal to f max it's an equilibrium and we know it's on the point of slipping that means if you increase this anymore it will start sliding so f max have been achieved and we know that f max as we just said is equal to mu times r okay so what i can do here is i can take this first equation here now sine 30 is a half so this is going to be p over 2 plus r equals 5 times 5 times 9.8 which is 49 okay so that's like one equation that i can form from this and the second equation here i can say p times cosine 30 well that's root 3 over 2 times p is equal to f max which is mu times r okay so i can say that this will give me root 3 over 2 times p equals 3 over 7 r so we want to find what p is so i have like these two equations equation one equation two now i can see that there's two unknowns so i can eliminate one of those unknowns for example if i make r the subject of this formula because i want to find what p is i can replace the r with what p is so if i rearrange this equation i'll have r is equal to seven times root three over six because seven you multiply by seven divide by three okay um both sides and that's um p so i can replace this r with seven root three over six p so i've got root 3 over 2p equals I have mu um, sorry not this one that's going around in circles I can replace I can I can now substitute this value of r into this place here so I have p over 2 plus 7 root 3 over 6 equals 49 so my unknown now is the p let me get rid of the fractions. Let me multiply both sides by 6 to get rid of the fraction. So that's going to be 3p plus 7 root 3 equals 49 times 6, which is 294. So we can say p is equal to, uh, this is um, p there. There's a p there. Be careful not to make mistakes. Let me just do that again. So this is replacing this r with 7 root 3 over 6p. Forgot the p there, you see? Be careful about that. Let's get rid of the fraction, as I said. So multiply both sides by 6. So if I multiply this by 6, I get 3p plus 7 root 3p equals, as I said, 49 times 6 is 294. Okay, now I can see p is common in these two. I don't want to make it into decimals. Let's leave it in exact form for now. So you have p and you have 7 plus 3 plus 7 root 3 is equal to 294 now i can find what p is so p is equal to 294 over 3 plus 7 root 3 so that should give me the value of p which i can then round to either 2sf or 3sf because we're using g it's up to me i can do it either way both will be acceptable in the exam so 294 over 3 plus 7 root 3 and that gives us 19.4388 goes on like that now so we can write the answer as 19 we can write the answer as 19.4 newtons either of those will be acceptable okay you can write it to 2sf or 3sf either of them are acceptable okay um, um, no problem with that i guess you could even like relieve it like that but that's not really um you know sensible so there we have the value of p okay so we've got our answer now supposing like right now there's no mark scheme for this so if i wanted to check my answer to see if it's correct okay then i could use this value of p and show that with this value of p um you know we can find what f max is using this value of p so i can 
store this as um, sorry no, store this as a whoops all we're done one second store this as a so I've got this in my calculator saved so for f max it will be this value times 3 over 7 okay um, p yeah f max is no no not this value we got to find what r is sorry so for r r is going to be equal to 5 times 9.8 minus uh, this value which I'll recall now okay that's the value times sine 30 which is a half so you're gonna have times 0 0.5 okay that would be the value of r okay and times 3 over 7 that will that will be f max that's f max now if our value of p times cosine 30 is equal to this then that means it's going to be at the limit of its equilibrium so that's the value of f max if p is equal to the value we found so let's see what our p cosine 30 gives us so we take p which is uh, this value here times cosine 30 and it gives us exactly the same value okay 16.834 that means we've got the right answer so you can always check in the exam if you have time to make sure that you've got the correct answers in case you made a silly mistake there are different ways you can do to check so i just basically used the value that i found okay for p in my answer and check to see if that gives me um, the correct values that causes this to be um, equal to the maximum value of f Okay, so I found the value of R based on that value of P, and then I found the value of um, F max based on that value of P, and then um, I, I could then see if this P cosine 30 is equal to that F max value. If it is, if they're equal to each other, that means this is going to be in the limiting, in limiting equilibrium, meaning it's on the point of slipping along the plane. Okay, so that completes question number four from June 2022. Other questions from this particular paper can be found um, by clicking on the link that will be found in this region here at the end of the video. Other questions from um, this topic of statics can be found in this, I guess it will be under forces and friction or um, in this particular um, playlist that should, the link should appear over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.